Hello everyone. Welcome to the Yellowstone Art Museum Art and Story. I'm Grandma Joan, a docent here at the museum. The docents are a group of volunteers that try to help our guests enjoy the paintings and drawings and photographs and sculptures that are here for you to see. This year, we started having story time that connects a book to one of the paintings. Today, we're going to look at this painting of some children who are friends, possibly cousins. The first is painted by Diane Tremaine. It shows good, four good friends touching hands, lying in the warmth of the sunshine after swimming. Maybe they are on vacation together or at a camp. The second painting is a watercolor painted by a Billings woman, Laura Mangels. It's of children, maybe cousins, on vacation together at a lake. Some of the kids are playing in the water and others are on the beach. The story today is about two families that are related to each other. The book is called The Relatives Came by Cynthia Ryland and the pictures are drawn by Stephen Brunel. It was in the summer of the year when the relatives came. They came up from Virginia. They left when their grapes were nearly purple enough to pick, but not quite. Hmm. I'm trying to the page. They had an old station wagon that smelled like a real car, and in it they put an ice chest full of soda pop and some boxes of crackers and some bologna sandwiches and they came up from Virginia. They left at four in the morning when it was still dark before even the birds were awake. They had an old station wagon that smelled like a real car and in it they put an ice chest full of soda pop and some boxes of crackers and some bologna sandwiches. And up they came from Virginia. They left at four in the morning when it was still dark, even before the birds were awake. They drove all day long and into the night. And while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses in the different mountains and they thought about their almost purple grapes back home. They thought about Virginia, but they thought about us too, waiting for them. So they drank up all their pop and ate up all their crackers and traveled up all those miles until finally they pulled into our yard. Whoops. Looks like the car ran into the fence. And here are the cousins waiting for them. Happy to see them. <clears throat> then it was hugging time. Talk about hugging. Those relatives just passed us all around their car, pulling us against their wrinkled Virginia clothes, crying sometimes. They hugged us for hours. Then it was into the house and so much laughing and shining faces and hugging in the doorways. You would have to go through at least four different hugs to get from the kitchen to the front room. Those relatives. And finally, after a big supper, two or three times around until we all got a turn at the table. There was quiet talk. 
And we were in twos and threes throughout the house. The relatives weren't particular about beds, which was good, since there weren't any extras. So a few squeezed in with us, and the rest slept on the floor, some with their arms thrown over the closest person, or some with an arm across one person and a leg across another. It was different going to sleep with all that new breathing in the house. The relatives stayed for weeks and weeks. They helped us tend the garden, and they fixed any broken things they could find. Looks like this auntie is helping a cousin fix a broken truck toy. Oh, and here are two uncles fixing the fence that the car hit. They ate up all our strawberries and melons, then promised that we could eat up all their grapes and peaches when we came to Virginia. Here they are with a band, stand-up bass and a guitar and a fiddle and a banjo. I'll bet they sang while the band played, too. But none of us thought about Virginia. We were so busy hugging and eating and breathing together. And then they all lined up for a family picture. Someone is taking a photograph of them to remember it. <clears throat> Finally, after a long time, the relatives loaded up their ice chest and headed back to Virginia at four in the morning. We stood there in our pajamas and waved them off in the dark. We watched the relatives disappear down the road, and then we crawled back into our beds that felt too big and too quiet, and we fell asleep. And the relatives drove on all day long and into the night, and while they traveled along, they looked at strange houses and different mountains, and they thought about their dark purple grapes waiting at home in Virginia. But they thought about us, too, missing them, and they missed us. And when they were finally home in Virginia, they crawled into their silent, soft beds and dreamed about next summer. The end. Now before we say goodbye today, I'd like to read a poem from one of the first books I got as a little child. It's still my very favorite book. This poem is about a, ch a child, another child, at the beach just like these kids are at the beach. <clears throat> and this is the little girl. The name of the poem is At the Seaside by Robert Louis Stevenson. When I was down beside the sea, a wooden spade they gave to me to dig the sandy shore. My holes were empty like a cup. In every hole, the sea came up till it could come no more. <clears throat> well, it was nice to be with you today. Um, so I'll just say goodbye. <laughs>